So last time we were calculating partition functions, and uh, the thing about partition functions is that they give you a quantitative measure of the number of accessible states. And that seems kind of interesting, I suppose, but uh, maybe not very useful. Why do we make such a big deal about it? Uh, well, one of the things that the partition function allows you to do is calculate all those things we looked at in thermodynamics, so internal energy, enthalpy, Gibbs energy, uh, equilibrium constants, uh, you name it. So once you've got the partition function, you can go ahead and calculate all those thermodynamic properties. So in many ways, it behaves as if it's like the wave function of quantum mechanics. So let's start with internal energy. And so uh, we can go ahead and we can uh, talk about the total energy uh, of a set of molecules. And so if we've got a set of molecules that are independent, and so they're not talking to each other, right? So there's no intermolecular forces then their energy is equal to the number of them in the lowest energy state uh, plus the number of them in the uh, next energy state times that energy uh, plus the number in the second energy state plus the energy and so on, right? So you got an infinite series here if there's an infinite number of states. And so we can rewrite that and say that the total energy is just the sum over all the states of the number of molecules in each state times by the energy of each state. And uh, we can get, um, the interesting thing is we can get the number in each state from the Boltzmann distribution. And we saw earlier that it's equal to the sum of uh, the total number times by e to the minus the energy of the state over kt divided by, there it is again, the partition function. And so if we plug that into the equation above, right, we can get the total energy uh, by uh, multiplying by the energy, right? So we can just go ahead and kind of plop the energy there on the end. So, uh, and we can rewrite this actually. So uh, the summation there, uh, we can go ahead and draw some things out. So the total energy is equal to uh, N, that doesn't change. So when we sum it up, right, uh, we can pull it out. The partition function doesn't change. And so then it is just N over Q times the sum of the energy of each state. Uh, times by e to the minus the energy of each state over kt. And the reason this is so useful is because if we know the energies of the individual states, uh, either we calculate them from quantum mechanics or we measure them from spectroscopy, we can go ahead and we can calculate the total energy of the molecule as a function of temperature. So remember both q and the t in this expression here, right, depend on the temperature. There's nothing wrong with this formula, but we can actually derive an easier to use formula that sort of highlights the importance of the partition function. And we're gonna do it um, as follows. We're gonna go ahead and uh, take the temperature derivative of uh, this Boltzmann term here, e to the minus the energy over kt. And we're gonna recognize this, right? So uh, essentially uh, we have a constant here, so we have minus e sub i over k. So when we take the derivative, we can bring it down like so, and then uh, what do we have? We've got our chain rule, so we take the derivative of the inside function, and again, the constants we just brought out front, uh, but we have a, a one over t, so that's a t to the minus one, and we need to take the derivative of that. And then we've got our outside function, and uh, the derivative of e to the power is e to the power, so we basically just go ahead and write this like so. And uh, what do we have here? Uh, we can rewrite this first term here. The derivative of t to the minus 1, that is minus t to the minus 2. So times by e to the minus energy over kt. And we can see the uh, negatives uh, basically cancel out. So that is the energy of the state over kt squared times by e to the minus the energy of the state over kt. And how does that help us? Well, we can cross multiply by kt squared. So we can say kt squared times by the derivative d dt of e to the minus e sub i over kt. Um, and that's exactly equal to e sub i times by e to the minus e sub i over kt. All right, and we can push all this up. There we go. And uh, we can substitute that back in now. So uh, we can say that the uh, energy um, is equal to n over q times by the sum of e sub i e to the minus e sub i over kt. And here's the cool part. So this term right here, so in the sum there, uh, it's equal to the right-hand side of this expression. So we could substitute the left-hand side of this expression in for this. So we can go ahead and rewrite that as n over q times by the sum over i of kt squared 
times by the derivative with respect to temperature of e to the minus e sub i over kt. We can bring some terms out front here. So we can go ahead and we can write n kt squared over q times by the temperature derivative of the sum of e to the minus e sub i over kt. And we can recognize that this term here actually is none other than the partition function. So we can go ahead and we can say, well, that's equal to q. And so that allows us to rewrite that final expression. So we can just push everything up one more time. And now where are we? So now we're in the promised land. So the total energy is equal to nkt squared over q. And uh, the temperature derivative of that sum there, well, that is just q. So it is dq dt. So there we go. The total energy is a function of the partition function. So this is really nice, right? So if you know the partition function, all you got to do to find the total energy is take the first derivative with respect to temperature and then multiply by this term here and you get the total energy. So if you know q, you can find the total energy. So if you know q, then that gives us the total energy. So that's why it's just like the wave function in quantum. If you know the partition function, you can extract out information like the total energy. Now, one last thing we need to remember is that we actually zeroed out the zero point energy. So the zero point energy, we actually set to zero on our scale. So that means we gotta be a little bit careful. So the total energy we calculated is not the real total energy at all. And so we can say that the internal energy at a temperature T is equal to that total energy we've got plus the zero point energy of the molecule. So the zero point energy needs to be added back again. And again, we're normally only interested in calculating differences in energy. And so if we calculate differences or even derivatives, those constants will just drop out of the equations anyway. So I suppose we can write this. This is a very formal way to write it. Although in practice, we only ever need to know changes in energy. And if we change in energy, it's really just the change in this uh, energy epsilon here. We don't really have to worry about the zero point energy which can't change.